The next type of curve we're going to talk about are Rho's curves. They're going to be, um, their equations are going to be of the form r equals a sine of n theta or r equals a cosine of n theta. So again, if your equations are of that form, then the type of curve is going to be a Rho's curve. A is going to indicate the length of each petal. To determine the number of petals, you're going to identify the value for n. If the value for n is odd, then you will have that same number of petals. So um, if n is 3, then you have 3 petals. If n is 4, which is an even number, then you will have double the amount of petals. So we would represent that as 2n petals. So again, if n is 4, then you would have 8 petals, because you take 4 times it by 2, which gives you 8 petals. To find where the first petal starts, you're going to substitute A in for R. And then when you do so, you can solve for theta. And that will tell you that angle that you get will tell you where the first petal starts. Finally, to find out how far to rotate each of your petals, you're going to take 360 degrees and divide by the number of petals that you've already determined. Graph r equals 4 sine of 2 theta. So you can see because it's 2 theta, um, we can identify our a value and our n value. So a is the number in front, so a is 4. n is the number in front of theta, so n is 2. And let's also write number of petals. Because n is 2, 2 is an even number. So to get the number of petals, you're going to times that value by 2, which gives you 4 total petals in this graph. The next thing I want to do is find out where the first petal begins. To find where the first petal starts, we're going to take A, which is 4, and plug it in for R. So again, take your A value, which is 4, plug it right there. We're going to solve this for theta, so we're going to divide out by 4, so you get 1 equals sine of 2 theta. If I cover this up, I'm asking myself, sine of what angle equals 1? And the answer to that is pi over 2. So I'm going to set this 2 theta equal to pi over 2. Next, when I solve this, I'm going to get that theta equals pi over 4. So the first petal is going to start at the angle pi over 4. And actually, if you work this out every single time, if you, um, for a sine graph, if you take the a value and plug it in for r, you'll always divide out and get 1. And then every single time you do this, you're always going to be asking yourself sine of what angle equals 1. And you'll always get pi over 2. So technically, we could say that the first petal starts on rose curves, at theta equals pi over 2n. So you can use this formula to help you solve for the first petal where it starts with sine graphs. Next, a, which is 4, is how far the petal, the length of the petal. So at pi over 4, I know that the petal goes out 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And we're going to do a nice informal petal curve. You could set up an r theta chart and plot points, and you'll get points along here to create the petal. 
Um, we're almost done. The last thing we're going to do is find out um, how far we need to rotate this. So the way you figure that out for rotating petals is you do 360 degrees divided by the number of petals. We found out there were four petals. When you do that, you get 90 degrees. So that's how far you're going to rotate between petals, or one petal to the next. So if I rotate from 45 degrees, that's going to another 90 degrees that puts me right there. Again, this is pi over 4. So 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths of pi that's out here, and we're going out 1, 2, 3, 4. We're going to rotate another 90 degrees. Same thing, length of 4. Rotate last our last time, 90 degrees. And it creates your rose curve for r equals 4 sine of 2 theta. The next graph is r equals 6 cosine of 3 theta. First thing I want to identify is my a, n, and number of petals. A is the number in front, n is the number with theta, n is odd, and so you're going to have the same number for petals. The number of petals is also going to be 3. To find where the first petal begins, you're going to take A and plug it in for R. Divide by 6, you get 1 equals cosine of 3 theta. Ask yourself cosine of what angle equals 1, and that would be 0 or 2 pi. So I'm going to take 3 theta, set it equal to 0. When I divide out, I still get 0 degrees. So my first petal begins at 0 degrees. A is how are the length of the petal, so I'm going to go out 6. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And informal graph. If you do this every time, you take A, plug it in for R, divide it out, you're always going to get cosine of something equals 1. The answer will always be 0. So cosine, you'll find, that will always start, the pedal will always start at 0 degrees for cosine. So you don't technically have to do all this if you just remember that cosine always starts at 0. Next, we need to determine how far to rotate each pedal. Take 360 degrees, divide by the number of petals, which we found to be 3, and you get 120 degrees. So if we rotate 120 degrees, go out 6. One, two, three, four, five. You have 120 and you add another 120, gets you to 240. 30 degrees shy of 270 and go out 6. And there's our rose curve. For your polar equations, r squared equals a squared sine of 2 theta and r squared equals a squared cosine of 2 theta, um, classified as, um, I'm going to pronounce this lemniscates. Um, we have this nice chart that helps us identify what the graphs are going to look like. So again, anything of this form, you're going to use uh, this diagram. Make sure to note if it's a 2 theta specifically because if it's a different number than 2, it could represent a different graph. So again, I have this chart and I have the two equations, the sine versus the cosine. The sine graph is symmetric about the pole or the origin. The cosine graph is symmetric about all three things, x-axis, y-axis, and the origin. The diagram for sine of 2 theta is going to fall along the line y equals x or theta equals pi over 4. And in the equation, you have a squared here. The propeller's length is going to be just the square root of that, which is a. So it's going to come out a length of a. Be careful that in the equation, it actually doesn't say a, it says a squared. And it also does the same thing in the other direction. So your sine graph always goes along this axis. 
So it's really convenient. That's all you got to do. For this one, um, cosine, it's actually going to be along the x-axis, and the rule still applies for the length of the propeller. You're still going to go out a length of A. So sine goes along, if you want to think of it, the line y equals x, and cosine goes along the x-axis. We're going to look at r squared equals 4 cosine of 2 theta. Part A, I want to check for symmetry. So the first thing we're going to check for is polar axis symmetry. In order to do so, we're going to substitute theta, or we're going to replace theta with negative theta. When you do so, you get negative 2 theta. Cosine of negative 2 theta is the same as cosine of 2 theta. So if you check, this resulting equation is the same as the original equation. So it does have x-axis or polar axis symmetry. Next, to check for um, symmetry about the line theta equals pi over 2, we're going to replace r whoops, with negative r and theta with ne negative theta. So when you do so, you plug it into the original equation. If you take negative r and you square it, you get positive r squared. And the same thing's going to happen over here. When I multiply those, I get 4 cosine of negative 2 theta. The cosine graph is even, so cosine of a negative 2 theta is the same as cosine of 2 theta. And again, you get the same resulting equation as the original, so therefore it does have y-axis symmetry. And for the last one, um, the pull, you're going to replace r with negative r. So when I do negative r squared, I get r squared equals 4 cosine of 2 theta, which is the same as the original equation. So this does have symmetry with respect to the pull. Just like the chart indicated, the cosine equation has symmetry for all three things, x-axis, y-axis, and origin, but we've just shown how to show that. Next, I want to graph r squared equals 4 cosine of 2 theta. First thing is right here, that is a squared, therefore if you square root it, you get that a equals 2. So the length of your propeller is going to be 2. It's a cosine equation, so I know that the propeller is going to lie along the x-axis, and I'm going to go out 2. in both directions. And so you get a propeller almost looking like the infinity sign. For this equation, we're going to graph r squared equals 9 sine of 2 theta. Again, always double check, is it actually a 2 theta if it's a 3 theta or 4 theta? Again, your graph could turn out to be something else, so be aware of that. Um, this is your a squared right here, therefore a equals 3. Because it's the sine equation, the graph is going to fall along the line. 
y equals x, or theta equals pi over 4. The length of your propeller is going to be 3, 1, 2, 3. And then also in the other direction, 